living water. So from a conventional chemistry perspective, it's, if you look at the body and so you say, oh, it's made out of atoms, and atoms are made up into compounds of chemistry, then we'd say from that conventional point of view, the body is over 99% water by you know, lining up all the different chemicals. Most of the molecules are water, almost all of them, and there's a few other things. But those other things might be enzymes. It could be thousands of times bigger than water. So, so on a weight basis, maybe we're two-thirds water. We're probably born 90% water. So water is, the living system is an aqueous medium. It's a, it's a watery fluid, with the exception of, OK, you have some fat cells that store fat-soluble things away, and, and most of the fat is in membranes, it's like the cell membrane, which is, again, the seat of, of consciousness. So what's happening with the water? Well, the water actually in the body, uh, if the body's healthy, it, there's like disease and there's lack of disease, which is not wellness, and then there's wellness. So lack of, lack of wellness and lack of disease is called susceptibility. It's you're on the edge of not being well. Uh, and at that point, you have maybe 50% of the circulation to say to say if it's a particular organ that's that's not well but not sick, then it has about fifty percent of its circulation, and it has less uh, it has less of the living water that's a different structure than H two O. Bulk water or H two O is what we have in a uh, in a sick state where it's actually the water becomes acidic. So it's not only H2O, uh, of course there's always other species involved, but, but, it's, but it's water that has solutes like sodium and chloride, salts, it has uh, other uh, things, sugars, and it might have bacteria or viruses floating in it. It might have some other, maybe breakdown products, waste products, uh, uh, carbon dioxide from metabolism, leftover from burning sugars, so there's many, and that's acidic, that forms carbonic acid in water. Uh, in, in acidic water, there's protons that form, uh, uh, that form uh, uh, let's see, H2O plus H, so H3O plus ions, hydronium ions, ions they're called in chemistry. So there's a lot going on. There's a much, so it's, it's not a state of coherence, it's a state of activity. We, call it, we can call it inflammation, we can call that, uh, or we can call it deposition and degeneration. If, if, it, if the body's not breaking it down and moving it out with inflammation, it's just storing more, depositing it into a more solidified form, uh, whereas inflammation dissolves and makes it more liquid to, to, to move it uh, and expand the tissue. So there's that expansion, contraction in, in the the lower states of health. In the higher states of health, the, the water actually forms into a structure that's not H2O, but, but uh, H3O minus. Uh, H, H, instead of H2O, it's H3O2 minus. So there's, it would be like two water molecules together and taking away a proton, leaving it with a negative charge, and it doesn't exist in that bi in that two molecular bilateral molecular form. It's actually in a sheet form, in hexagonal rings, so in, in sixes, uh, and so these sheets will are of water, uh, water-like structure. What I call uh, uh, a, uh, a liquid crystal water. What the researchers at University of Washington are calling EZ water for it stands for exclusion zone because these sheets of water, like like when water in the ocean, which is full of salt and all and viruses and all kinds of other things in that ocean water, when it forms uh, sheet ice in the Arctic on the Arctic Ocean, that ice is pure water. How does that happen? Same way as it happens in the body, it first forms a sheet of water, of liquid crystal water, and then two of those sheets of liquid crystal water that are offset line up into ice. They expand and line up into a solid ice. 
So in the body, they don't form the ice. They just form this liquid crystal water where the sheets are closer than in ice, but they're offset. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's an entirely different chemistry, entirely different physics as well. The physics, because it's negatively charged, you have what are called pi electrons around these hexagonal rings of the, of the water structure that are all very similar to each other. And that's a, called a coherent state. When those pi electrons in the sheet and multiple sheets, and they can be millions of sheets that can form in a very short time, say on a cell membrane, you form these sheets. Now you have structured water that has an electrical charge, a negative electrical charge. It pushes protons out as it's pushing out in that exclusion zone. It's pushing out the sodium and the chloride and the viruses and the bacteria and everything else. And it's forming just this pure liquid crystal water, living water, we can call it. So this living water is a battery. It's a capacitor, it holds charge, it separates charge. It, it, because it's a coherent zone with all these many electrons not anymore acting as separate electrons like they would in bulk water where, well, this water molecule is attached to a hydronium and this water molecule is around a sodium ion and this one's around that chloride atom and this one is next to a virus, so they're all different. When you have sheet after sheet of li living water because they're all as one, there's that element of consciousness as well, of the presence of, the, of what's distant here now, there's the presence of the future and the past in, in the here now. That, that, uh, and, and I would model this as perhaps the seat of the subconscious, this living water in the body. That we're not quite consciously aware like we are in, in the cell membrane, but it has an impact, it's, it's in touch with the conscious. It's where the thought forms bubble up from, where the information comes through to get to the conscious membrane, is through this coherent zone of living uh, hexagonal water. It's alkaline because the acid protons are eliminated, extra protons are eliminated from it. It's antioxidant because it's negatively charged, uh, which means it has excess electrons. It can give off an electron is like a spark and uh, anywhere it's needed. And that means, by definition, an antioxidant is an electron donor. So living water is an antioxidant because it's negatively charged. It's ready to act as an electron donor. In fact, it'll act as, as an electron donor before uh, an electron will be removed from something like vitamin C or vitamin A or vitamin E, which is great because vitamins are needed as cofactors for enzymes. So if we have living water, if we have a high level of wellness, not just just barely eking along, saying, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, oop, now I'm sick. We're saying, I'm really well, which we can't determine by symptoms. If you're really well, you'll get flu symptoms when the flu comes around because your body you know, will have something to clean out and it will clean out that tissue that's affected. When the virus comes in, your body creates inflammation, fever, and that's a generalized tissue cleansing response that doesn't just clean out the virus, it cleans out any other toxins from the environment or from your diet that have accumulated since the last one. So it's good to have a couple of little flus twice a year uh, is a good rate. Most people who, who over the years have come in and said, I can't believe I have cancer. I was the healthiest person I know for 20 years. I didn't get even the flu. Okay, we have to understand if we misinterpret, if our model says not having the flu is health is a sign of health, then we'll be su surprised when we get cancer. And one out of two people in our culture now will get cancer, and it's going up. So we, we have to change our, our thinking. Vaccinations actually drop the energy level into phase one, which is the cancerous and precancerous terrain, terrain where viruses can attach to the cell membrane because there isn't li a living water shield to push them away. Viruses can't swim. They can't move upstream. They can't, they can't push their way through an exclusion zone of living water. They can't. They have no mechanism to do that. They're a little electromagnetic particle that's going to be attracted to a low energy cell where there is no shield of, of energized water. They'll attach and do their thing. That's what they're made to do. So, uh, 
So the water is crucial, the pi electrons forming this coherence zone, which is a similar thing happens in DNA. There's pi electrons from the sugars that form tubes that become superconducting when the spirit minerals show up, and they'll show up when there's coherence. Uh, so it's a matter of producing the state of, of balance, of energized, healthy coherence of, uh, that supports the spirit minerals that exist as this, this tidal uh, gaseous state uh, in, in the atmosphere and in the planet that we live on. Uh, that's why in ancient times people understood that if you wanted to build a house you cut the trees down at the full moon because at the full moon the tide is high and there's more spirit minerals in the wood and the wood will not rot, it will not burn as easily and so that's good for construction. If you want to cut firewood you cut it at the dark side of the moon and therefore there's less spirit in it to, that's superconducting that has what's called Meissner fields that'll, that'll, that'll repel uh, external fields coming in like a fire, which is a plasma. Uh, electromagnetic fields are, are repelled, so it, it, it uh, will burn better if there's less of that uh, spirit in it.